Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to the final class of 2021. Believe it or not, the year has flown by, and here we are in December 2021 with the last class for the Thames Valley Churches of Christ. These classes to be used in our locations or family groups um, as we find most useful. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look back at the year that's just gone and the ways in which God has moved among us. And then we're going to take a look at a little bit of a preview of the year ahead where Chevy's going to talk about this year and then Tim will talk about next year and particularly Acts 2.42, which is our theme verse for next year. But they'll share about that in a moment. Just to preface what they're about to share, I would like to read from Colossians chapter 1, which says this. Paul writing to the Colossians says this in verse 3. We always thank God. And I share this from me to you. This is how I feel too. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit. I think we've seen that this year in Thames Valley. The gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, the whole world and Thames Valley, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. We can surely say that all the good things that have happened this year are because of God's grace that we can celebrate. So let's let Chevy remind us of some of the wonderful things God has done this year. Let's let Tim point us towards next year, and I'll come back at the end with a, a couple of concluding thoughts. Let me hand it over to Chevy. In the book of Acts, in chapter 15, verse 12, we read, The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. And today, I'm here to tell us and to remind us of the great things that God has done through us here in Thames Valley throughout the year we've just had, 2021. Some of us might remember right at the beginning in January how Josephine got baptised um, and she's now studying medicine and is part of the Cardiff Church. And then in, in March, we had a brother and a sister get baptised, which was amazing. We had, first of all, Kendra and then Benji get baptised in that same month, which was just so exciting for Iggy and Monica and the family. It really was amazing that day. And then we had another um, family member become a Christian, get baptised in July, who Eric and Doris's daughter, Audrey, which many of us will remember down by the river in the summer. And um, just recently in October, Lucilla got baptised as well. And that was very, very exciting. We've also seen some people um, being restored to the fellowship. And uh, we, some of us probably remember in April, Jasmine got restored uh, to the fellowship, as did Sinead in the month of May. So God has definitely been working in, in a great way just to help these people and to use us to help these people as well to um, be baptised and to be restored to the fellowship. Not only that, we've also had a lot of people moving in to join us here in Thames Valley. Uh, Paul and Majida and Mackenzie moved here from sunny Florida. Um, as to, and then Eric and Doris and Audrey came from Hong Kong. And then we had our very own Jamie May and his wife Maria move from uh, London, from east of London. And then down in Dorset, they had uh, Jam come from the Philippines, Efe come from Nigeria, and they also had more recently Diana moving in from Kenya. So a lot of international movings around of the disciples. Um, we also had more people from Hong Kong move and they were, I'll give you some, some of the names of the different families. We first of all had Johnny and Fong Bong with their daughter Sherman and their son Isaac. And then God gave us Charles and Ada with their sons Owen and Gordon, also from Hong Kong. 
So welcome to everybody who I've mentioned so far, but there are more. Then from Watford, we had Dawn and her husband, Matt, with their two beautiful daughters, Bethany and Leah. And uh, we also had from Hong Kong, Veronica with her children, Jade and Jaden. And uh, then Jackie and Cece, also from Hong Kong, came to join us with their children, Austin and Millie. And um, we, we also had a lady from South Africa called Lauren um, joining us in Berkshire. And I think finally, I hope I haven't left anybody out, we also have had Sam and Leigh with their um, children Jackie and Michael moving in from the east. Uh, so God has definitely been blessing us with many people moving to join us. In the year, we've also had some weddings, which is always exciting. We had Francois and Agnes get married in September. And then we also had Alex and Alice getting married in October. And we've even had some babies. So Josie was, was born, a new baby daughter to Tim and Tash in September. And then Tidu and Joan's son, Tidu and Joan's son Alex um, and his wife Dee had a little baby girl too called Alma. So Tidu and Joan became grandparents. So very, very exciting. God worked in an amazing way with the situation with Heather. We were all, we've all been really um, praying for Heather to make a, a full recovery after her, opera, after her accident. And God worked in an amazing way. And it's just been so encouraging to see Heather and Ashley and the family back with us and Heather making a really amazing recovery. So we're very grateful to God for that. I think as well, another highlight to be mentioned is Obi, our brother Obi has just written and published his second book called Leading from Your Core. So that's amazing that God has worked in such a great way through Obi. We also had the team camp this year, which despite COVID went ahead and nobody got COVID at the camp. So that was amazing how God worked it out. And it was a fantastic camp. I know we saw some of the, we had a video uh, just recently showing us uh, uh, the, just the highlights of that time. And uh, I think it's just so encouraging how the church has stayed faithful and unified throughout the pandemic, how um, everyone has remained committed to the fellowship. We've had a lot of groups as well, which I just wanted to mention. I know down in Dorset, um, they've been having a women's Bible discussion on a monthly basis. And each of the women in Dorset has taken a turn to lead that discussion, and they've had uh, many visitors come as well, which is really exciting. Um, they've also had a student Bible discussion on a regular basis too. So that's been fantastic to, to hear about. And then there are many other groups across the church. I think about the Deep Diggers group, which is a group where everyone is dedicated to deepening the Bible study and building unity. Another group, which Richard and Ben has been leading, have been leading called the Bereans which is teaching us how to study the Bible with people effectively. So that's been going really well on Tuesday nights. And then Fun Lola has been having the Bible Hub group, which has um, been amazing too, with a lot of discussions around topical issues, which I know many of us have enjoyed and have been able to bring our friends to. Um, we also have had a support group uh, developed for people with elderly parents in the church where everyone can join together and support each other as they go through this particular stage of life. And last but not least, we have NECA, NECA's Book Club, which um, has been a group that a lot of the women have really enjoyed. You know, in Psalm 118 verse 1, it says, we read, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And today, really, I just want to do that. I just want to give thanks to God. I want to give God the glory for just helping us and um, just using us and working through us in such a, a wonderful way throughout 2021. Thank you. Shemmy's going to read Acts 2, 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
Acts 242 reminds us that what high priority fellowship had in the early church and the pandemic has reminded us what a blessing it is to be together. I'm talking about being together in the church and what a blessing that is. In the year ahead, um, we can benefit from being together. And there are a few reasons why time together is so good. It's great to have safe people in our lives to confess our sins to. In the book of James, we're reminded of the value of that. Also, it's great to have people to talk to, to be vulnerable with, and have a Christ-like transparency in our relationships. We can also spur one another on. Shepherd, can you read Hebrews 10, 24, please? And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not meet, giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Here we're reminded that we can spell and another on, so that we don't live unproductive lives. We can share our lives as a family too, as brothers and sisters. <clears throat> um, some ideas for us in the year ahead. One thing is to give the priority our family groups should have in our lives. Also, maybe we can arrive early and make the most of fellowship at church. Make plans to spend time together, praying um, and organise to do that. So let us give relationships the priority God has and honour God to our relationships in the year ahead. Well, thanks to Tim and thanks for Chevy for reminding us about what God's been doing this year and pointing us in a direction, a healthy direction for the year ahead. I'd like to finish by sharing a couple of thoughts from 1 Peter chapter 5, just from my heart. But let me read first. 1 Peter chapter 5, it says in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That could be you. It could be me. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I just want to apply these verses to myself and to us as a fellowship, and to say from me, from my heart, and I know from Tim and Chevy's as well, it's been a privilege to serve you as your staff this year. And I want to thank you for your support, your encouragement, your wisdom, your input, your feedback, we, you know, we all do this together. It's not all dependent on one person or a small group of people. And this church has again this year risen to the challenge of being a priesthood of all believers to serve the people around us, to serve one another, and to reach out to those who are lost and struggling and far from God, those who are poor and needy. Despite all the challenges we face this year, we have perhaps found ourselves sometimes in need of being lifted up. You know, when he says there, Humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. But that implies they've fallen down. I don't know about you, but sometimes this year with the COVID and everything else, I felt down and out in some ways. And I've needed lifting up by God and by some of you. Cast all your anxiety on him. Haven't we all felt rather anxious this year? 
COVID, finances, health challenges, the new variant that's come. Are we ever going to get back to normal church, whatever that is? He says, he cares for you. God cares for us. And I think we felt that. I do feel that. Be alert and of sober mind. In other words, don't panic, I think. Understand that we have an enemy, but God cares for us. He isn't uh, prowling around trying to devour us. But look, let's look around us at this fellowship. How many people has he devoured? So few, if any. I want to think one of the wonders of God's grace is that he's helped us to stay together over the last year, really almost the last two years now since things got a bit crazy with COVID. Resist him. Yeah, we've got to resist. And I think we are resisting, resisting the devil. I'm not sure we can resist COVID terribly well. I don't know how exactly how that works, but we can resist the devil standing firm in the faith. That's what we've been doing, haven't we, this year? Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing, undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Yes, in Africa, in India, in the Far East, in the, uh, in, in the, uh, in the Southern uh, Australia and uh, Australasian region and Latin America and North America and all through Eastern and Western Europe and everywhere else, all of the family of believers have been undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. But he says this, the God of all grace. And here we are at Christmas. We're here at Christmas celebrating God's grace in gifting us his son. His, this is the God of all grace. Called you into his eternal glory in Christ. That's where we are. We are and we're going. After you have suffered a little while. Yeah, I know it feels like this has been going on forever. For sure it does. But it is really a little while. He will himself restore you. We should encourage each other but he's the one giving us the strength to restore us and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. This is a great time of year to take some extra time during our holiday breaks to pray, to ask God to make us strong, firm, and steadfast for the year ahead. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. I just want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your devotion to God. Let's pray that whatever happens over the next few weeks, that we go into next year with stronger faith and a greater determination to be devoted to uh, what Tim talked about there in Acts 42, the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. And let's see the amazing things that God will do in 2022. Till the next time, perhaps till the next year. Take care and go.